seen the goat neck with some micro on it. Yeah, the old TA, I guess, right? I tell you what, you won't see me wearing one of those. <laughs> they look good in them, though. Definitely not my look. That's great. In terms of recruiting, obviously you're having a monster recruiting year and half last couple of years. How have things changed in terms of the doors that are open to you now that they not have open for your previous Yeah, I think that uh, um, there's been a definite, you know, shift in regards to maybe the the pool of guys that are receptive um, and that's been exciting you know I, I would say we expected that uh, I would have been disappointed if that didn't happen uh, based on our last two seasons and then um, I think also just the, the culture that's been I think shown to the country maybe via social media, you know. I, I think that's been, I've had a lot of comments of parents and recruits about the videos that they saw um, and just how that drew them to want to come and check it out and see if it was really what it appeared to be, you know, on, on social media. So um, there's no question, but at the end of the day, it's, it's about performance on the field and uh, being able to, um, break through and, and win some of those games that we had not been able to do in the past and put ourselves in position to be in contention for, you know, the Big Ten title race. Uh, that's a, it's an exciting thing. And so to me, uh, with that, you know, you just stay true to who you are, though, in both the preparation process to get ready for game day and in recruiting. And there's a certain fit that you want in players, and that does not change. We just want to be able to, to attract guys that fit with us that can play high-level football. Yeah, that's, that's a great question. So to me, number one, it's it's young men that care about school. That not talking about having straight A's, but education is important to them. Um, if it's important to them and their families when they're in high school, it'll be important to them when they're with us, and they'll want to go to class, and they'll understand the importance of going to their academic appointments, whether it's tutors, academic support, whatever it happens to be. And we're not having to drag them to class, okay? And so that's what I, and I've said it, I think, very from the very beginning, maybe the opening press conference when I was the head coach, that I, I can do a lot of things, I can motivate, I'm, and I'm glad to, I want to drive you to greatness, okay? But I cannot pull you. Because if I have to pull you, that means you're trying to go that direction and I'm trying to take you that direction. We're not on the same page and you're not a good fit, okay? And so that's a non-negotiable. The other one is understanding and wanting to be developed as a man. Here's why that's such a big deal, okay? And you say, how do you know that? Well, you spend time with them, okay? You ask them lots of questions. And if you ask the right questions, eventually you're gonna find out if that's important to them and their family, all right? And here's why that's a big deal. So if I'm gonna spend a lot of our time talking about how we develop you as a man and you could care less, no one's ever gonna say that they don't care about that, okay? But by your response and by the way that you interact right now in the recruiting process, I'll be able to tell if that's important to you or not. And if that's not important to you, half of what I say, you won't even be listening. And it's not even important to you. So that's not a good fit. And then the same with coaches. I, got, I want to find coaches that care about those types of things, that they understand the value of those. So when we say fit, that means the things I value matches up with you value. And I just ask them. And then the last thing is, I want guys to love football. If they don't love football, and that, that's the one we got to figure out now, because it, it's way it's way too hard. And we're not, we're not going to lie to guys. If you, if you if you don't love football, you know, playing Big Ten football and going to class and all the responsibilities you have, you, you're probably not going to make it because you have to love the process of what we're going to ask you to do and the training and just the, the work that's going to be demanded of you. And so, to me, it's guys that love the game, love to compete, okay, love to do the little things it takes to be great in football those three areas. So number one is the academic focus. Number two is the, the emphasis that you want to be developed as a man. And number three, you want to be an elite football player. And so we got to spend all this time figuring out who are the best guys that care about those three things that can help us win championships in Indiana. Tom, when you look, look at this team, where can you be better than last year? I believe we can be better on defense and not giving up as many explosive plays. Uh, I believe we can better on offense and running the football. And I want to see us be better in the return game. 
on special teams. Those would be one from every area we need to prove on. Yeah, we've had a lot of conversations. Really, the goal was to educate our guys. We're at over 90% rate right, right now vaccinated, uh, which is a, um, a good number for us and uh, feel good about that. Um, but the bottom line is it's a decision they have to make. And so life's about choices and you have to understand uh, the uh, consequences for those choices, you know, good and the bad, that's, that's life. It's no different with the vaccine. You gotta make a decision. And uh, for me, I had to make a decision and I felt like that I couldn't do my job without, without having it, you know, to be able to uh, go where I needed to go, do what I needed to do, be able to be in this uh, environment and, and, and go out and recruit and be in with all a bunch of different individuals from who knows where they've been exposed to. So, and uh, we did a great job, I feel like as a staff and as a, as a whole athletic department, just educating our guys and they got to make those decisions. And so I think our guys have seen the value in it and everybody's got opinions about it. I've got my own family as well, just different different sides of it. And that's not, not here to debate all that. And, and so bottom line is, is that uh, um, there's no question, you know, as you see the emphasis of it, that the different conferences and even the NFL, what they're talking about. And I haven't seen all those things yet, but but I just know that it's uh, something that we have to deal with. And if a young man chooses not to, then he's going to have to have certain things he's going to have to do to be able to, to, um, to stay to where he can try to keep himself healthy, you know. So just uh, something we're going to work through as a program, and uh, but I do feel good about where we're at. Come here. Sorry, just to call. I mean, it's, don't forgive me, it's almost sort of a point of question, but I mean, like Coach Frank said, you almost see it as a, a competitive thing at some level too in terms of, you know, basically being able to look at players and say, I mean, like Lincoln Riley also said, I know it makes me know I can count on Availability, well, it definitely would affect availability, you know, because the biggest thing that, that I think happens with it is when you, you know, if you make the decision not to be, then you will be subject to contact tracing, uh, which is a big deal. You know, uh, we're not going to be doing the daily testing for everybody like we did last year. I think that's pretty, pretty uh, um, across the board. Everyone is, agrees with that. And so that was how we got away from the contact tracing, you know, because really for us, we never, we struggled until we started testing every day because contact tracing was just kicking our tail the whole summer and into fall camp. And so that to me is what we will not have. And so getting the vaccination allows you not to have to be tested and not be subject to contact tracing. Okay, and so those to me are just, those are big things. Those are, just, those are factual things. So that's just reality of how it is. And so whether you agree with it or not, that's just reality what you're dealing with. And so guys gotta make those decisions. So that's where it does affect availability for sure. And guys just staying healthy, because if you're not healthy, then you can't, you can't be out there. So, because the player safety is still the number one objective here. Tom, you talked about, you know, in your opening statement about coming back here December 4th. Uh, just to articulate that, I mean, how, how does that show how far maybe the program has come in four years? That you've been yeah, you know, when I first took over, I talked about I wanted to change the expectations of this program and create belief. And so that's what we're doing. And the expectations are changing. And uh, I, I've said this, I'm not, I'm not bashful about talking about this. So I, I, I uh, when I first took over as head coach, I would not allow our team to break anything down on Big Ten champs because I had heard us doing it before and I just felt like they were empty words. And I didn't feel like that there was uh, belief in those words. And I just felt like that it was more negative than it was positive. And it's just something we just said, broke it down, everybody jogs off, you know, so I put into that. This is the first offseason I've given our players the permission to break it down on Big Ten champs. And so, uh, to me, um, it's all about vision, mindset, grit. Okay? And the vision is very clear. That is the goal. All right? To come back to this facility and play for Big Ten championship on December 4th. That is the goal. All right? And then you start working back from there with how you get to that goal. And so, to me, that is the vision. And the mindset we have to have is that we're going to we're going to um, affect that opportunity by what we do every single day, all right? And that becomes the focus. And then the grit gives you the perseverance and the passion to work through all the obstacles that you know are going to come along the way, even through a long two and a half weeks of fall camp and through a long, difficult and challenging Big Ten season. So um, that that's clearly what the objective is. Do you 
you know what you uh, built is on players selling them the opportunity to do exactly what you're absolutely about, to play in this building. I've never talked to a kid in recruiting and did not mention winning the Big Ten championship. Matter of fact, I'm looking for guys that believe that we can and we will. How, I know you don't do anything for personal satisfaction, but there has to be a level of pride to see these kids coming through and have put themselves in a position now, competing, being mentioned with the Ohio State and those types of teams. There's no question. We finished second in the Big Ten East last year, okay? So um, I feel we are very, um, I don't know if the word's justified, but I feel very confident in stating that the goal is to win the Big Ten East and play here on December 4th, all right? And like I said, I wouldn't allow our players to even say that before, okay? You have to earn the right to speak as a player when you come into a program, okay? You have to earn the right to say certain things when you stand in front of the media, I believe, because you have to be accountable for your words. Words matter. Words are powerful. Words are important, okay? And so, to me, it doesn't mean that, you know, we got to go out and create those opportunities now on game day. We do. And we got to earn it every single time we take the field. Is that hard? Yeah, it's hard, okay? I get that. We play in a tough, tough division. We play in a tough, tough conference. And we got a really challenging non-conference slate, okay? So, bottom line is, is you understand this is division. This is the mindset we got to have to get there. And it's going to take a whole bunch of grit. Coach, is it the six, seven guys yeah. on the radar as far as the NFL draft that I'm not sure you had a couple guys that came back? I mean, how much of the developmental point is that for this program? Well, uh, we, we feel it's a huge part of our program. What I like to explain to, to uh, recruits is that I, as I feel like that we um, are one of the best in the country at developing our players, and we give them tangible examples of that, where a young man comes to Indiana, with a certain level of expectation as a player, and this is where he's performing now on the field in the Big Ten and in the country. And so uh, I'm excited about that. I think we have to be, as a program, one of our goals is to be the best evaluators in the country because we have to out-evaluate everybody else. We have to be the best developers in the country. We have to out-develop everybody else in order for us to accomplish the goals that we have at Indiana. So that, to me, is the key. And so that developmental part is what we're talking about. It's all these guys now that are being mentioned for different this and different that. That's based on their performance on the field, okay? Those don't just come out of, of thin air. The guys have to earn that, and they have to make plays on game day. So that, to me, is what this is about. And we want to, to guys that, that want to come here and want to help us do the special things as a team because when the team does well, as you just mentioned, those individual guys are going to get recognized. Um, there are reports that uh, Texas and Oklahoma will be Big 12 for the SEC. What's your thoughts on that? Just a general Well, I mean, I don't know if I have much of a comment about them. You know, uh, I saw it in the media like we all did, you know, uh, but have not had any, any other conversations with anybody else about it. Um, definitely kind of caught me off guard a little bit, uh, to be honest. But, uh, you know, I just think it, the, the landscape is changing, you know, and I think that, you know, you just even, I even think about, like, West Virginia's in the Big 12. That never, like, resonant it doesn't make sense to me you know because i was raised when everything was regional right and so i just think those those barriers are kind of breaking down you know and i think you, you, and you think about even the players you know that we recruit well they know guys from like this guy like, hey i'm best friends with someone like but you, you guys are like four states away they're like well we met at this camp or we met at this and now we're you know was, and i get it this connects everybody right so i think those barriers are kind of broken down a little bit so i guess because of that I'm not as surprised as I may would have been, you know, in the past. Uh, so I guess who knows what the future holds. I, I think it's definitely, you know, one thing we do know is nothing ever stays the same, right? And so there's not a lot of, lot of constants, but I think that is a constant, that things are always going to change, right? So nothing surprises me anymore, even though I was a little bit taken back with that. I have no idea, you know, how far along it is, if it's really true, if it's going to happen or not going to I don't know. Uh, but if it does happen, it's going to make it. It's going to make an impact, you know, on you know their conference gaining two and another conference losing two. You know, we're the Big Ten. We got 14 teams. You know, All right? So I don't know what's going to happen. We're going to be the Big 16. You know, I who, who knows? I don't have any. I have nothing to do with that. But I will tell you this: things are probably going to be changing in the next several years. It looks like. Coach, as a defensive coach, now there's there's limits on 
contact and, and padded practices. One, how do you think that'll look? And two, how much did last season uh, having to change practice the way that you guys did due to COVID and some of those other things, how much will that help you guys adjust to things like that? Well, I think it will, but I, it's interesting. So they came out with their recommendation for what we have to do for fall camp. And, and I, I really wasn't that concerned when I saw it because I, I knew we were very similar. Well, I went back and looked, and, and, and obviously this past year was different because of the pandemic. But I went back and looked at our 2019 fall camp uh, progression as far as how many times we wore shells, full pads, and went in spiders. Because I've been a big, we, we've used spiders quite a bit, which is that the padding you wear underneath your jerseys, it's not shoulder pads, but at least protects your collarbone and things like that in your, in your AC joint. So we actually almost used the identical number of, of those three types of practices already. So it's not going to be a major shift for us at all. And I feel very confident, comfortable with the progression we have. But I do think that we have learned how to practice at a high level in spiders. We learned how to tackle using a lot of you know, equipment and we use blocking using a lot of equipment and try to eliminate the live contact with our guys, which is kind of what we're trying to do here in fall camp. And so I feel like we've kind of really positioned ourselves to maximize our preparation with what we've been doing the last couple of years. Hey coach, uh, in, in the podium uh, earlier today, you referred to Ohio State as the gold standard. They've won four straight uh, Big Ten championships. Can you go into like a little more detail? What is it y'all are chasing when it comes to Ohio State? What just stands out about that program? They're really good. <laughs> they got really good players. They got great coaches. Um, they're, uh, you know, sometimes you play teams, you know, and you know I've coached for this going in my 30th season, which is hard to believe, but but uh, um, you find a little chink, you know, and whatever they do, maybe they got a bunch of great athletes, but they're not as well coached, whatever, just different things. But man, they just they got really good players. They're very well coached. Uh, speed everywhere uh, on both sides of the football big athletes um, I mean they're impressive you know so uh, and honestly you know I've coached in the SEC and never forget the first time we lined up against Alabama you know and LSU and some of those teams that just look different than any other team I'd ever seen in my coaching career and uh, came away feeling similarly you know especially Alabama so I mean it's just um, you just don't you don't. You, you have to play so well to be able to take advantage of whatever you might be able to get, and in, in any mistake you make, it gets magnified. You know, against teams of that talent level. And then the other thing is, you know, a guy goes down, and the next guy comes in, and there's not any drop off. You know, which is not normal. There's usually there's a little bit of a drop off. So, you know, I can't say enough great things about them. You know, but yeah, they are the gold standard. I mean, they, the way they've you know dominated our conference in the last several years is is impressive. You know, and so uh, that's who we are chasing after because the reality is they're in our division. They're not just in our conference. They're in our division. So in order to get to the championship game, you got to be able to to get through and, and win your division first, right? And so that's. Uh, you know, they're the ones in the way, right? And there's other teams too that are really good that are right there with them. So, you know, it's just, uh, but that's why you, that's why you want to be here. You know, you, you're in a league where it means a whole lot, you know, to be able to get to this position and, and uh, um, yeah, it's tough, but you know what? That elevates us, you know, that, that elevates us as coaches, elevates us as players and, and the performance we have to have as a, as a football team. So, but here's the good news. You only got to play one at a time, you know, and that's what we're going to do. And right now, the next tone on the schedule is Iowa. Tom, you referenced just there your, your time in the SEC. Um, having been there, being a head coach here, what are just some of the fundamental differences of uh, maybe, not even just the SEC, but football in the South, maybe football in the North, just, you know, just the number of recruits maybe that are down there. Not that there's not great players up here. Are there any fundamental differences in how you do Well, I think the thing that always stuck out to me, or still sticks out to me, is that in, the, in that part of the country's footprint, okay, where all those schools are located, they all have spring football, okay? I mean, almost every state does. And so to me, that makes a difference. So, so I, I coached high school football in Florida, all right, in my first five years of my coaching career. And so, and what you don't, what you realize when you coach down there, um, you have a month of spring practice, okay? Probably about 20 some days. Well, we only have 15. So they actually even practice more than we do in college, in high school, all right? And they they pretty much, we go a couple days of, you know, shoulder pads, and then we're going right into pads, and we're, there's a lot of tackling and blocking, a lot of fundamentals being taught and developed. So if you grow up in that part of the country, 
Okay, you have one full extra year of football that you've played, which that's a lot. That adds up. So your freshman year, sophomore, junior, senior, going into your senior year, man, that, that's a whole extra year because it's one month a year, and you just do the math. I mean, that, that makes a difference. So you have a whole extra year of football that you play, okay? And so that's that whole – so I do believe that makes a difference. And now from a numbers perspective, you know, football is a big deal, you know. It's – after living in those parts of the country, you know, what I noticed, this is my, my observation, it was it was football and it was baseball. Those were two, and, and track was, 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 was popular as well, but not baseball was a pretty big deal. And so basically, kind of basketball was kind of squished in between those two. It really was, and the, and the spring sports started in December, okay? And football always starts at the same time. So there was, a, the, the basketball was less of the focus, just being real with you, okay? And so basically you had, you know, as a coach, when you had your players, you know, they spent a ton of time playing football and doing things that were, because then the whole summer was spent seven on sevens, all different things with that. You know, so our son went from, when we moved down to Florida, okay, he played three sports. And it became real obvious when he went to play in high school that it was almost going to be impossible for him to play more than just football because they did something with football the whole year. And it, was, it wasn't just like rec stuff. This was organized things with their team. So that just creates a different problem. I'm just telling you, that's just, it's called time on task of learning the fundamentals of football and practicing those fundamentals. And so I just think that elevates all those kids and the way they're able to play. So, and, there, and, there's, and, and because football is such a big deal, from youth thing on up, a lot of kids play it. And so that creates, and football is a numbers game, so you have more kids to pick from. Okay, so we can go down to Florida and, and pick those guys or whatever state it is. Georgia, we get like we get from Alabama. We got guys from Mississippi now. You know, we're just trying to get guys from from that footprint, in my opinion, to be able to come to Indiana and play football. We have a lot of really good football players, football players up here as well. But there's also it seems to be a more focused group of people going after less guys. So it, it makes it even more competitive to be able to find those guys and find guys you can take and develop. So that to me is. A, you know, big picture view from my perspective of what I've experienced, what the why those kids and why you might have more of that down there. When you look to see Michael Penix, if you guys want to be the program you want to be, are you going to have to go down there at times and find the right kids that fit your program? But go well at times, and we'll go wherever. I don't really. To me, it doesn't matter where they're from. Okay, I want guys that want to be here. And I, I, that is to me. I mean, hey, I'm going to recruit our, our state as hard as I possibly can. But if you guys want to come here, you know what? I wish them well. But you know what? I want guys that want to be here. I want guys that believe that we have the ability to win a Big Ten championship in Indiana. I want a coach staff that believes that. I want a football team that believes that. And I'll go, I don't care, I'll go to, you know, New Zealand. We got a punter from New Zealand. We'll go where we got to go to get a guy that believes that, that this is where he's supposed to be. He wants to be here. He's going to help us win the Big Ten. Speaking of punters.